Welcome back to the Windy City Politics and History Channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the 2024 United States presidential election. And we're going to be taking a look at a hypothetical matchup between incumbent president Joe Biden on the Democratic side and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on the Republican side. And Ron DeSantis is currently polling in second place, a distant second place, that is, in the Republican primary. So we're going to be taking a look at um, what this matchup would look like. And I'm going to make a video in the next few days on some of the electoral difficulties that the Republican Party is dealing with in 2024. For example, I don't think Donald Trump could win Arizona or Georgia, and I think DeSantis could win Georgia, possibly Arizona, although it's a stretch. But the problem with Ron DeSantis is he does not have the appeal to the voters in the Rust Belt that Donald Trump has. So Ron DeSantis might be competitive in Wisconsin, but Michigan and Pennsylvania might be out of reach for him. So anyway, we're going to get started. We're going to get right into the video here. So safe Democratic states. And now the problem with Ron DeSantis as well is that not only is he unable to appeal to the working class voters that Trump appealed to in 2016 and 2020 in the Rust Belt, Ron DeSantis has also gone very far to the right on social issues, meaning that the suburban voters who used to vote Republican might be, you know, moderately conservative, will view him as too far to the right on social issues. And once again, I keep all my predictions unbiased. I focus on the facts, focus on the data, focus on past historical trends. I research these videos. I put a lot of thought into them, into who I think would win each state. So if you guys haven't already, it would be great if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video, and turn on notifications so you can get notified whenever I post a new video. So let's get right into the video. So starting off, California, Oregon, Washington, Illinois, Hawaii, D.C., Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Vermont, New York, Maine's 1st Congressional District are all safe Democratic states. Colorado shifts into the safe Democratic column. And then moving on to the safe Republican states, Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, South and North Dakota, Nebraska's at-large electoral votes, along with its 3rd and 1st districts, Kansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, Indiana. Now, Missouri, Indiana could be in the ballpark of 14 points, but just for the, cate for the sake of simplicity, we are going to throw them in the safe category. Kentucky, West Virginia, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, and that is it as far as the safe Republican states go. And now moving on to the likely states. So after, you know, 15 points margin of victory, you know, Joe Biden's already at 191 electoral votes. So the Democrats have a lot more ways to win this election than the Republicans do. So now moving on to likely states. And now for likely, what I want to start off with is states that are likely but are not necessarily going to be competitive. So on the Democratic side, that would be like New Mexico, Virginia states. Where, you know, Virginia back in 2012 with Mitt Romney would have been competitive for the Republicans. But now if Ron DeSantis were to run against Joe Biden, he's gone too far right on social issues to win the state of Virginia. You know, same with Maine. He's gone too far right. Same with New Hampshire. I mean, New Hampshire, maybe he could get within five points. But these are states that are not necessarily going to be competitive. Whereas states, or I guess electoral votes like, you know, Nebraska's second and Minnesota could be a bit more competitive they're still going to be in the likely column. And now, for the Republicans, so starting off, you know, you have South Carolina and Alaska in the likely column, and those won't really be competitive for the Democrats in 2024. You know, maybe in 2028, but not in 2024. And then, you know, when you get into a state like Iowa, you know, the Democrats might, you know, put some money in play there, you know, make a few campaign stops, but I think that state is beginning to be out of the Democrats' reach. And then Texas, this is a state that's becoming more competitive for the Democrats, but I think Ron DeSantis would keep it at around five points winning there. And then Florida, I think Ron DeSantis could shift into the likely Republican column, win there by around five to seven points at the presidential level. And then lastly, Ohio, I believe he would win Ohio by around five points. I honestly think that, you know, he would perform worse in the Rust Belt than Trump did. 
and I think you'd only win Ohio by seven, by five points rather than eight. And then moving on to the lean states, you know, for the Democratic Party, we have Michigan, we have Pennsylvania, we have Nevada, and we have Arizona. And with that, President Biden has won re-election. So Nevada and Arizona. Initially, I thought Nevada would be a state that could go to DeSantis. However, once he entered the 2024 presidential race, he positioned himself to Trump's right flank politically. He is running against Trump. He is running to the right of Trump. And here's the thing. And I've seen this where people are talking about, well, he has time to pivot before the general election. He is polling in such a distant second place that if he were to even close that gap, which I don't think he will, I think he is just preparing for a potential 2028 run with this 2024 run, you know, hiring campaign staff, building up a national fundraising base. But I don't think he's going to win the Republican nomination. And if he does, I think it could go to a contested convention or in some way it would limit his ability to pivot for the general election if he even intends to pivot. As you saw in Florida in 2022, he had no primary challenger, but he ran pretty far to the right. And even though he won, the United States is not Florida. And so that's why I think Nevada's in the lean Democratic column, mainly because of how far right DeSantis is on social issues now. And, you know, Arizona, same way. Arizona voted for Trump in 2016 by around three points. Before that, in 2012, it had voted for Mitt Romney by around nine points. And then in 2020, it flipped to Joe Biden by just under a point. So if Arizona didn't vote for Trump in 2020, chances are it will not vote for DeSantis, who is running to Trump's right in 2024. Now, the one state that I think DeSantis could win back would be the state of Georgia. And I think he could hold North Carolina at about one point. And then Maine's second district, I think that could become more competitive. I don't think Biden's going to be able to win there, mainly because I don't think the Democrats are going to invest too many resources into Maine's second district, given that it's only one electoral vote that was lost by around seven to eight points in 2020. I think you're going to see the Democrats put more resources into a state like Texas, into a state like Ohio, rather than a singular electoral vote. Just like the Republicans would put more resources into a state like Minnesota, rather than Nebraska's second. It's one electoral vote. And then, lastly, the state of Wisconsin. And this is one that I've kind of waffled on. I think DeSantis does not have the appeal to the working class voters in Wisconsin, nor does he have the appeal to the suburban voters in the suburbs outside of Milwaukee, who, which are all solid Republican, but have kind of shifted a little bit to the left. So I feel that Joe Biden would narrowly carry Wisconsin, and Wisconsin's always been a competitive state. Al Gore and John Kerry both carried Wisconsin by under a point. Barack Obama was really the only recent Democrat to carry Wisconsin by large margins, other than Bill Clinton. And that was in a three-way race with Bill Clinton, Ross Perot, Bob Dole one time, and George H.W. Bush the other time. And then Michigan and Pennsylvania, you know, Biden winning by over a point in each of those, probably by around three to four in Michigan and around two to three in Pennsylvania. And anyway, thank you for watching. And I'm going to categorize all these states as a solid color just to give you an idea of what the actual electoral map would look like. And you see that Joe Biden would defeat Ron DeSantis in 2024. 287 electoral votes to 251 electoral votes. Ron DeSantis would slightly improve on Donald Trump's loss in 2020, winning back the state of Georgia. But ultimately, he would still be defeated by Joe Biden, and Joe Biden would be elected to a second term winning all of the states that he won in 2020, with the exception of Georgia, which would narrowly flip back to the Republicans. The rest of the states, with the exception of Florida and maybe some southern states right near Florida, would move to the left rather than to the right. Thank you all for watching the video. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And once you hit subscribe, please remember to turn on your notifications so you can get notified whenever I post a new video. I hope you're enjoying the political content. We're going to have some historical content too, and I hope you all have a great day.